What is good? We're back in an out of studio session. We got our guy Austin. He's he's ready for summer, baby. Well, tonight we got some buy lows, some veteran buy lows. Some guys will be affected by the NFL draft, and some guys are just you know good buy lows here. So I'm gonna kick us off, and we're gonna try to go in order of kind of most expensive to least expensive. Some in the middle might be semantics, but right off the rip, I'm going to go with Chris Olave. Um, now we've been, Jalen Waddle has been a favorite of our like high end by lows. I think Chris Olave needs to be on that list as well. Uh, this is a, a guy who's gone back to back thousand yard seasons in his first two NFL seasons. And I just feel like some of the, the, commotion some of the love has has dissipated a little for chris olave i feel like some people are like ah maybe he's just mid maybe he's not any good i i think that's all nonsense for a guy to go over a thousand yards in his first two seasons is fantastic you're getting a new offensive coordinator and clint kubiak coming over from san francisco who was the passing game coordinator for them uh, obviously has long ties with his dad uh Gary Kubiak, who is a Shanahan right-hand man. So all that kind of stuff ties together. Clint's been all over the league. He, he's a little younger. They got rid of that terrible system they had over there for the last uh, few seasons. And there's there's a couple of really good Olave stats that I want to point out because I know you guys love the stats. Football Insights had a really good, good one with Chris Olave. 3.13 yards per route run with motion. Uh, the last two regular seasons, third behind only Tyree Kill, 3.98, and CeeDee Lamb, 3.22. Uh, New Orleans is dead last in motion dropback usage each year, despite being pressured at least. Uh, Derek Carr checked down the third most in 2023, 15.3%. I bring that up because you're having Clint Kubiak come over, who has, uh, you know, been in that Shanahan uh realm now for a year help them go to the nfc championship go to the super bowl Uh, and what do the niners do the niners run a really high percentage of of motion Uh, the niners were using 76.4 percent of motion which was second in the play in in the league rather Uh, and the niners were the most efficient offense with motions in terms of expected points added per play according to sports information solutions so I bring that up because I think we're, we're going to see a you know big change in how uh, pre-snap stuff is done in New Orleans where it was stale and stagnant. Well, now they can kind of get up to the 21st century of moving those guys around. And what does Chris Olave do? Naturally, really good speedster there. Uh, he, he's elite. He's up there with guys like Tyree Kill uh, and CeeDee Lamb. And we see those games from Chris Olave periodically throughout the season we just don't see him all the time and he does have some drops here and there that you don't love but i mean cd has drops tyreek always is up in the top of the league of drops uh, when you get targeted a bunch and you're the and you're that dude you know typically drops will happen so i just feel like chris olave's maybe being slept on him and some people are starting to step over him a little bit i saw another great stat from Wiz from the un, Undroppables top 20 wide receivers in yards per route run versus man coverage uh, since the start of 2020, tw- since 2022, minimum 150 routes. Tyree Kill, number one, CD Lamb, number two, AJ Brown, number three, DJ Moore, four, Justin Jefferson, five, and then er, and then Chris Olave coming in at six. Uh, so again, is a really fast, shifty guy. He knows how to get open. He's an excellent route runner, and he you know he can get deep down the field. And I think Clint again is going to put them in good position pre-snap and uh, different ways to attack defenses to really put Chris Olave's skill set on uh, best display here. So I really, really feel like Chris Olave should be. Um, at the top of your list of buys, if anybody is down low, I'm not saying everybody in your league is down low on Chris Olave, but I, I do feel like we're starting to see a little bit of a downturn because he hasn't exploded into, you know, one of the best wide receivers in the league. And, and people thought that maybe was the trajectory that we were going after, after year one. I'm, I still have a lot of confidence. I practice patience a lot. And it's like, you didn't, the patience isn't, it's, it's crazy that we're talking about a guy who went over a thousand yards as his, as his rookie season and a thousand yards in the next season. And we're, we're starting to question things. And I, I don't think we need to really be questioning all that much. I think we see a little step forward uh, here with Chris Olave to put big points on your board. For me, I would be looking to trade anything. You know, I think Roma Dunze and Chris Olave is a, is a big discussion for a lot of people. I personally am still sticking with Rome in that in that uh, conversation because I'm a huge Roma Dunze guy, 
Um, but really anything after that in the rookie draft, if I can get Chris Olave and we're talking super flex, um, typically I, I would go ahead and trade that pick basically for Chris Olave. So, uh, any thoughts on, on Chris Olave, uh, Austin, before we move to one of your players? Yeah, and I, look, man, I, I'm just going to come out with a haymaker. I'm not saying he's the next CD Lamb. I love, I love Chris Olave, but you look at you, you look at the first two seasons of Olave and the first two seasons of CD Lamb. Chris Olave has more receiving yards, more receptions, and he's almost tied with him in touchdowns. And it's like, I mean, let's just go back a little bit. I remember people starting to get a little frustrated with CD Lamb. Oh, a hundred percent. Time to take him out of the top, whatever time, you know, and (laughs) it feels like the same right now, right? Yeah, it really, really does, man. I mean, the production's been there, the consistency, the health, everything is the draft capital. Chris Olave checks it all, man. And it's just still not good enough for people. You know, it's, it's wild. You know, people want, to see that Puka Nakua that uh Jamar he was Chase Puka Nakua, you know, that's what I'm saying he put up a thousand you know but not a whole lot of rookies are putting up a thousand yards year one you know Casey a thousand's not good man we want to see yeah. 1500 he didn't the put up the reception season. numbers but yeah 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 you're yeah, right you're it's right. it's uh if it's not 1500 yards during their rookie campaign I don't want them you know that's yeah. just, <laughs> Get that's just how it is things. yeah <laughs> um but no I, I think that was a really really good one man yeah. if if uh and, and it's not to say I wouldn't add to if I was one eight one if I could if I'm anywhere in that next group of wide receivers, that 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 lad, Brian Thomas, worthy, like if I need to add a little something to move to Olave there, I'm I'm down with it. Like, you know, can we let's start slow and, and do two, three swaps and then we'll we'll take it from there. But I'm OK with adding to those players. I would trade J.J. McCarthy uh, probably straight up for Chris Olave for sure. Uh, so that's just kind of just trying to equate oh, yeah. some rookie oh, yeah. picks here a little bit. And, and we, we have another show here on the channel that that's, we're going to be talking some rookie picks and veterans kind of doing a similar thing. I just want to give you some price points because I know sometimes we move through some stuff and we, we try to give price points. But every time we don't give a price point on every single guy, it'd be, it'd be nice if you guys gave some price points. So there's some price points. Hey, guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel or hit your boys with the five dollar holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure. Awesome. What you got for us? Yeah, man. First wide receiver I'm going to talk about today, Christian Kirk. I think he's a really good buy low. I feel like we've kind yes. of been saying this for a minute now, Casey. This and is on that new crusade. News. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's so funny, man. You brought up a great tweet earlier. I'm going to bring up the exact same tweet. You were stealing Ooh. my thunder from Dan Wisner. Uh, man, what, what what a great tweet. He, he needs way more love for this. So this is the top 20 wide receivers in yards per route run versus man coverage since 2022 so you said chris olave is sixth christian mm-hmm. kirk who i'm talking about right now is seventh he was it, it, man his numbers were really really good 3.31 yards per route run in this metric uh you know that's look we know he's a good player it took him a few years to really establish himself put himself on the map once he, you know once he got the bag and landed in jacksonville it felt like it was wheels up right away man the, he, here's something that i want you to keep in mind about christian kirk 251 total vacated targets in Jacksonville. That is the third most vacated targets out of any team in the NFL. Uh, and, and let me just say this. I, I really believe this is the year Trevor Lawrence figures it out. I know he's had a solid season under his belt before. This is the year where he really puts up some big numbers. I'm talking candidly north of 4,000 passing yards over 30 touchdown passes he's going to be really productive and I think Christian Kirk is going to lead the way I love Brian Thomas Jr. I do not I do not expect Brian Thomas Jr. to put up better fantasy stats at this season I just I, I wouldn't put my money on it and I like BTJ BTJ a lot man uh, but a few more things about Christian Kirk 27 years old he was wide receiver 11 just one year ago okay like it's it's recency bias man people forget it he got banged up he played 12 games this year but he was really solid on a points per game basis 12.5 points per game this season you know who that was the same as garrett wilson okay Mm. obviously their adp is astronomically different from one another and for context Right. Christian Kirk at 12.5 T Higgins, 11.5 points per game. Again, two players where their ADP 
very, very far from one another. Of course, T Higgins is getting drafted way, way, way before. I just feel like in this situation, right? If I'm looking at T Higgins, it's almost like I'm going to go pivot, look at a running back or another position and then go grab someone who like Christian Kirk, who in my opinion is going to put up relatively similar stats, but, but at a much, much better price. Um, and yeah, no, uh, I'm, the, I'm a huge proponent of Kirk. He, he's been a, a crusade of mine all off season, buying him everywhere I can. Uh, final few things that I will say, of course, Calvin Ridley, he's gone. We now have um, Gabe Davis in town in Jacksonville. We also have Brian Thomas Jr. Like I mentioned, their first round draft pick. And here's something I don't think a lot of people know, Casey. Evan Ingram, he, mm. while he's still a dog, it is inevitable that he's going to regress. And I say that because l- listen how good he was last season. Oh, he will dude. never, he will Amazing. never, I hate to say it, he will never have that good of, of a year again because it was it was just incredible, man. He had 114 receptions. That is the second most in NFL history for a single season for a tight end. He doesn't get enough love for the season he had last year. It was 114 receptions, dude. The only one to ever have more was uh, Zach Ertz. He had 116 in 2018. So, I mean, I I hate to say it, man. It just in and I, I still I still love Evan Ingram. It's just regression is inevitable to a certain degree. And yes, Kirk is going to benefit from that mm. again to yeah. a certain degree. So by Christian Kirk, he's cheap, man. He's he he's going to have a solid season. He's going to have north of a thousand yards and and it, he just his value will not move. It's not going to rise. People just don't care. No, he's just no. one of those guys. Nope. No, he he that that's part of why he's a big buy for me and has stayed a big buy for me. Uh, because in he is reaching nowhere near a first round pick. Mm-hmm. Nobody nobody even thinks that that's in the realm of of what should be expected. So it's twos all day long, and he is just such a quality starter uh, week in week out. And you saw once he exited, um, you know, outside of that week one, which you were a little worried about Kirk. You know, he really was very solid throughout. And then once he left the fold for. Jacksonville and I know you know Trevor got hurt but you know they struggled a little bit I'm not pointing that all towards uh Kirk but you know he's definitely um a safety valve and and a nice little blanket insurance for for him and and Trevor so you know that's a I I bought um you know Hollywood Brown and Kirk I could come on every buy low show and say that but I I, in the rookie draft that I did right after the draft I bought Hollywood Brown for two seven uh in that draft and you know I think you could get Kirk probably for anywhere in that range of those mid twos um, and get yourself a receiver. Like if you're in the little bit more of win now or winning mode and you don't want to risk it on a, on a rookie who you don't know if he can play or not. Um, you know, I, I feel like those mid twos Kirk and, and guys like Hollywood are, are just great buys right now. Yeah, absolutely, man. Who, uh, who do you have next on, All right, on I'm, your I'm list, gonna, Casey? I'm going to go outside the wide receiver realm here. Uh, I'm going to go tight end. And it's not Evan Ingram, um, although maybe it should be. Um, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Ferguson here. I'm gonna go Jake Ferguson. Okay. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think this is a big draft winner. The Cowboys addressed pretty much nothing except for like a Southeast Missouri wide receiver in the sixth round. On the flip side, they went heavy offensive line, which is you know great for potential protection and and keeping Dak upright. Uh, Ferguson is just on his second year in the league. And he was seventh in tight end targets with 96 eighth in yards with 761 ninth in receptions, 71 uh, seventh in touchdowns with five and then 24 red zone targets. That was number one. So Ferguson already a big factor for Dak. Mm -hmm. They don't add anybody, you know, you're hoping guy like Tolbert takes a step forward for them, but that's not guaranteed. I mean, he looked all right at times for them, but you know, you got Brandon cooks and you have CD lamb, which CD lamb is in line to absolutely just munch again. Um, But you know, ninth overall in tight end scoring in, in 1.5, and he had 212 points, all right? And you say ninth, all right, well, ninth, ninth's not that great, Casey. Well, one, I think the cost for Ferguson is still relatively low. I think in it, in that same range where you could buy that Kirk in Hollywood, I think you and tight end premium draft, I think you could be buying him for a mid-second all day long, and that's a quality starter in your tight end position. But here's here's kind of the, the, the thing for me. Um, the gap between nine and 10 in tight end premium scoring, um, so... Ferguson at 212 points, 
The next one at 10 had 187 and then 11, 181 and then 12, 165, 13, 163. So we see a big drop off there, right? Because the volume wasn't there and the quality of player wasn't there. Or maybe there was an injury and they, they you know, you know, maybe, you know, we'll see some guys jump up and down there. But I think Ferguson is going to continue to ascend only in his second year in the league playing with Dak and is already establishing himself. You know, uh, Schultz was there the year before. So really just was the first year to establish himself as, you know, a nice security blanket for for Dak and I think you're just going to see that moving forward he already showed that he loves him in the red zone so I think you could even see a higher TD upside there and I think you could even see north of 100 targets this season so Jake Ferguson tight end premium you know I'm not a huge advocate of buying tight ends per se and non-premium but if you know I play a lot of premium so that's usually where my mind is Uh, I think he would be even cheaper in non-premium where you probably wouldn't even maybe you could even throw three threes, two threes together or a two, three swap or, you know, maybe, maybe not, but I know in tight end premium, I'd be willing to swap out mid seconds to get a guy who's going to, you know, come in and get me double digit points every single week with, with, I think even more room to improve because again, it's not like they went out and spent, they didn't draft Xavier worthy. Like we thought they might, they didn't, they didn't draft you know, anybody, they went offensive line, which, you know, if that's my team, I always like when my guys go offensive line, but as we're talking fantasy here, that could be good for, for your fantasy players. But the fact that they didn't draft another wide receiver or tight end or whatever, like I'm, I'm all in on Ferguson this year and he hangs around, uh, you know, we're doing these, we're, we're trying to rebuild our post draft ADP right now, but he hangs around until the eighth through 11th round a lot of times in those, in those drafts. So uh, any thoughts, Austin? <laughs> I uh, I was trying not to laugh while uh, you you brought up a lot of good points, but but uh, do me a favor, um, go on Player Profiler's website right now and pull up Jake Ferguson, and just just look at his picture. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen this. I uh, I was I was I was cracking up with that. Uh, but I Casey, I thought you brought up a lot of really good points about Jake Ferguson. He listen to this stat, man. This is where Jake Ferguson ranks amongst tight ends in team history through two seasons. He is first in games, 33 games played, second in targets with 124, second in receptions all time, 90, second in yards, 935, second in first downs, and tied second with seven touchdowns. Jason Witten was basically first in almost every category, but to be second, to be right there, and for him to be a buy low, I think I think you nailed this one. I think this is a really, really underrated player. Yeah, that's a that's did, a that's did a you big see, buy. Did you for see me. that uh, yeah. that picture? Oh, sure, <laughs> little little celebrity Jeopardy, uh, Norm McDonald there. Love it. Is is Love that it. Norm? Oh, it is. I think, oh my god. <laughs> I think I think it is. Dude. Burt, he's put Burt Reynolds. Yeah, he's. That's I think he's pretending one. to be Burt Reynolds. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's a quality picture. Go ahead, and maybe we'll get J- Jason to throw that up while <laughs> yeah. while the video is uh, is pumping out there. But player profile will have some good ones. They used to have a good one for Cooper Cup back in the day. Um, but yeah, they'll they'll they'll, th- they'll they'll throw some funny picks out there. Uh, yeah. You got another one for us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason, get to work, man. Start. Uh, yeah. <laughs> got got to edit that in. Uh, yeah, man. I want to talk about Deontay Johnson. Mm. Here's a player I, I love. All Deontay, my favorites, man. baby. I I love Deontay. Mm. I I've probably loved him from damn close to day one he's just Mm. he's really been relatively close to Garrett Wilson in in two ways and what I mean by that is he he's a target hog and he is phenomenal at separating right I'm not saying he is Garrett Wilson I'm just saying I don't think he's terribly far from him and I think he's a huge huge discount right I think he's way cheaper of course um and for what it's worth, man, Deontay Johnson and the volume it's, it's been there for, for the past three seasons, he's had 144 plus targets. I, that, I mean, those are some big boy numbers. So few, so few guys actually meet those numbers. Uh, his health, he's missed five games in five seasons. I, I don't know how much better it could possibly get, right? The best yeah. ability, ability is availability. Like Casey, right. we, we always talk about this. Deontay Johnson's the epitome of health. Um, And I fully expected the Carolina Panthers to draft the wide receiver, Xavier Leggett, 32nd overall. But let me ask you this. Who scares you more, Xavier Leggett or George Pickens? Yeah, right. Right. Of course. I I think George Pickens is candidly going to, you know, outscore him for fantasy purposes, probably NFL purposes as well. And I just think that's a big bump up for him. You know, now he gets Bryce Young, who, hey, man. He, they're they're building. They're finally building around him. Jatavian Sanders, 
Deontay Johnson, Jonathan Brooks, you know, let's get after it, man. Let's see what Bryce Young's got. Deontay Johnson's going to be the big dog. He's going to be the one in Carolina. Yes, Xavier Leggett is there, uh, but Deontay's still going to get the majority of targets. And, uh, you know, besides that, who is it? Like 33-year-old Adam Thielen, right? Mm. He doesn't worry me. I know he's still going to find a way to be annoying sure. and, a, you know, a pain in the butt because he's going to take a few touchdowns, a few yards away from Deontay for fantasy purposes. But it's like, you know, look, Deontay still, you know, they, they went out and, and traded for Deontay. Like they they wanted Deontay. They clearly made it, oh, you know, yeah. they, they, they showed their cards. They wanted to get Deontay. They wanted to bring him in. And I, I just, I think it was a good move by Carolina. Yeah, uh, I just I just think he's the perfect weapon for Bryce Young. Yeah, the the you know there's two problems last year in Carolina. They couldn't get protection, which they went out and paid two guards a ton of money. Uh, and then they you know the year before they had drafted a first round tackle, and he played really pretty good the first year, and then just very poorly last year. So they've addressed one issue, and then the next issue was wide receivers getting separation. Well, who's high? One of the highest on the open scores is Deontay Johnson. So they, they went and prioritized somebody who can go out and get open on their own, give Bryce a target. And if we can give Bryce another second or two, I think he can operate. Um, will, will Bryce be one of the best quarterbacks in the league? TBD. But I, nobody would have survived in the situation that he was in last year. So, I, you know, I think Bryce could be on this list for a buy low uh, as well. And I like you said in the beginning of the talk with Deontay, they're building. I like Canales. You know, sometimes new guys get in there, and you're like, "What is the direction that we're going in here?" They just seem to just be kind of all over the place. Maybe they're trying to use some of the stuff that they. Uh, he, I just seems like he has a very clear cut path and direction. And at this mm-hmm. point, like, you know, one time is kind of like, "Oh, you know, may- maybe he just got lucky." Then he went down to to Tampa and did it again with Baker uh, from Geno to Baker and then does it again down there. And yeah, those supporting casts were really good in both situations. And now he went over there and he built himself a, a better situation and a better supporting cast. And the direction that they're heading in is very, very, um, it's at least, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's very intriguing to me. So uh, Deontay has been a, a massive uh, button smash for me coming into that, you know, ninth, 10th, 11th round. If he's, if he's hanging around anywhere in there, even, even eighth, uh, when you need production and you know you can start this wide receiver, and I'm and I'm talking startups, tight end, premium, super flex, uh, he, he smashes every time. I'll, I'll buy Deontay in any any league that's competitive. So I, I love it. I love he, it. Like he was the wide receiver eight in 2021. I, I mean, it's mm-hmm. phenomenal, right? And and right. to go back a little bit further, I'll, I'll I'll end it with this: from 2020 to 2022, so a three year span. Deontay Johnson scored the 12th most fantasy points more than Keenan Allen. Right. And and I just, I just, I I love, I love his value. I really do, man. I feel like he could be like a Keenan Allen type guy who just, Mm -hmm. just, you know, just crushes fantasy points, just gobbles them up uh, one reception at a time and has a million receptions for the next, you know, three, four years. So I I like the spot. I like the player. I like the value, uh, all that. And I think, I think I'd put him solely in that same, you know, I've said it a bunch of times. I put him solely in that bucket of that mid second in the rookie drafts while everyone has rookie fever. If you have a team that's ready to go and you need another starting receiver or starting flex, I think you could trade that mid, that mid uh, second round pick super flex item premium yeah, for for a guy like Deontay Johnson, I feel like all these guys that Austin has are all right in that range, and those dudes are just super juicy for me to go ahead and 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 take that shot. Because you know, once you've been playing for as long as kind of I have, you, you know, I'm not saying that I don't take a lot of rookies. I do, but like I almost always explore the options of what the veterans are, depending on what what where my team is and where I'm headed. And can get for those guys once the draft rolls around and everybody's on that clock and they're so excited to be a part of this draft. And, and, you know, usually you can even squeeze even more value. Uh, I think, I, I think I, you know, in that two, seven trade, I, I ended up getting Hollywood and Rahid Shahid, not that it's super sexy, but just squeezed a little bit more juice out of there. And, and, you know, I could have easily added either one of those saints receivers as buys. Cause they didn't really add anybody at Perry Shahid. Uh, but I went with the big dog and Olave over there. So. All right. Uh, I got one more for you. Actually, I got a whole list of them here, but you're going to have to wait for all those guys. We'll we'll put them out little by little, little, little tasty morsels. You're not going to get them all in, in one shop here. Maybe if you're a patron, um, but go ahead, like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. We got the Patreon rolling over there. Jason's created a nice little draft kit for your pleasure. 
Uh, got a whole bunch of useful stats and information. We got rookie rankings. We're crushing mock drafts. We got some rookie ADP up over there for, for Superflex tight end premium. We're just getting back into the flow of startups, trying to get that post uh, a, um, post NFL draft mock ADP rolling for over there. So lots of good stuff. Three extra episodes a month. Be sure to check that all out. Or at the very least, just click five stars on the pod if that's where you're listening. So, uh, all right. I got one more guy for your pleasure here. This is the cheapest uh, the least sexy, probably the least fun of all these guys. And I would probably say you could you could really just go backfield as a whole. Like I went I went Jerome Ford here because I wanted to throw a running back in here that was cheaper. Uh, but Nick Chubb also, I feel like, was a little bit of a winner. He's super cheap um, at this point, at least in the drafts that we're doing. Uh, nobody's nobody's really touching him. But Jerome Ford's even cheaper. Like he's he's going he's going super late. Don't have a great. Uh, bead on exactly where he's going at this moment because like I said we haven't rebuilt the the post draft ADP quite yet but we're, we've done two and he's made it past the 13th round uh, in those uh, and you know through he was RB 13 last year they didn't really draft or add anybody now they did in the offseason they added Naheen Hines and Donta Foreman to me that's just hey let's get some bodies and just make sure we have enough for until Chubb can get back and if Chubb's healthy mm-hmm. or not um but Chubb injury September 29th or has the first surgery September 29th and then another surgery on November 14th MCL and ACL on on you know on an older guy so that's you know a little bit more love for Jerome Ford there not a whole lot of young whippersnappers added of of anybody that's super sexy but like I said RB 13 last year was just the second year in the league and weeks 2 through 17 so I I excluded week 1 because Chubb was in there Average 13.3 points per game. Um, he was 19th in yards uh, with 771. He was 14th in missed tackles force with 39. 11th in 10 runs of 10 yards or more uh, with 22 of those. 9th in breakaway percentage, 32.3%. 10th in targets, 57. Uh, 13th in receptions uh, with 42. So just... Just a fun little ad there where it could really give you some good production. Does Nick Chubb come back right away and is just his, his old self? Maybe. Or maybe it's a half a season or maybe it's not at all, unfortunately. You know, we've seen this happen a little later in careers. And, you know, not that I want it to happen, but it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility. So it's a, it's a nice shot here um, to go ahead and get you some you know, production from the rent running back standpoint that isn't going to necessarily cost you really much of anything. You know, he, he wouldn't even necessarily be potentially a guy I'd go out there throwing out trades for. He's, he's a guy that I would be trying to build a, a trade and add him into. I'm not just going to go probably seek out Jerome Ford per se, but he'd be an ad in a trade where I'm trying to get something done. Um, and uh, you know, the Ford team intrigues me a little bit, but Chubb also fairly intriguing. Uh, but Jerome Ford was the one that I really wanted to focus on being cheap second year in a league. Good, good speed guy, pretty fast. Cleveland likes to run the ball. I think Cleveland as a whole takes another step forward. So Jerome Ford was, you know, the, the cheap asset of acquisition here to, to end my buys. Any, any thoughts on, on Ford there, Austin? I love Jerome Ford last year, man. He carried me. He carried me for yeah, a that's while. That's what I'm saying, man. No love for <laughs> Ford, but I mean, he was decent, man. Good player. He, he he was he was a hell of an ROI last year, man. Like I picked him up off waivers. I just couldn't believe how he just kept producing. Like him, Zach yeah. Moss. I mean, last year there were a lot of you know. Zach Moss was up for the, up for yeah. nomination of being the same kind yeah. of guy to buy, and and maybe yeah. Zach Moss might even be a better buy. But that's another story for another day. He's on the list. Yeah, th- there were there were a lot of running backs last year. I mean, man, like Isaiah Pacheco, you could have won zero RB and succeeded last mm. year, absolutely. Mm. Uh, but but I like it, man. The uh, yeah, the final guy, yeah, 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 absolutely. The final guy that I have, another wide receiver, another mm. wide receiver that just nobody cares about. It's mm. Chris Godwin. Yeah. So Baker, let's talk about Baker Mayfield real quick. Three years, a hundred million dollar deal. Casey, how do you feel about that? If you own Chris Godwin. You're happy? I'm not. I'm not upset about it. I got. I know I have a competent quarterback. He definitely seems to have quite the connection with with Evans. Um, so that oh. you know, I think that takes you down a little bit. But uh, Godwin, you know, reportedly moving back to the slot. So we'll see mm-hmm. kind of how that affects the pecking order and how he goes. But but Godwin still had a, a very solid year last year. It just wasn't you know crazy 
over the top that you would like to see. But I mean, I think he's priced appropriately and, and I'm smashing Godwin if I can. We, we've seen him be just awesome. So I, I love him moving back to the slot there. And I think there's uh, I think the, the value arrow points up a little bit for him there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Baker is, is good enough to help, you know, for, for, for Chris Godwin to produce for fantasy purposes. Let's talk about some of the other moves that the Buccaneers made this offseason. Graham Barton, right? Six foot five, 313 pounds. We're talking about the center from Duke that is now mm. with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's going to keep Baker upright. He's going to do his best to keep him upright. I mean, hey, hey, man, I look at that as a W for Chris Godwin, right? Obviously, Absolutely. entire in the the entire Bucks offense. That's a W. I like the pick. They also added Jalen McMillan a little bit later in the draft. It's kind of a tough landing spot for McMillan. I, I do like McMillan. Right, he was a prospect that that sure. pr- produced pretty early, and I, and I liked what he did for Washington. Uh, I, I actually I, I liked him a lot, but it's tough for him this this season, right? Just just because obviously you have Evans, you have Godwin. It's just I'm saying it's going to be difficult for McMillan to have yeah. an instant. I, I thought for fantasy sure. impact. I thought for sure McMillan would go in that slot and Godwin would stay outside. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I think I think McMillan's better suited for the slot in this next level. But, hey, they're, they're, it seems like McMillan's going to get some run outside. So, And the past three seasons, Chris Godwin has had 200-plus fantasy points in each of them. He's had three straight 1,000-yard seasons, and nobody cares. It, it's weird, right? I'm not saying those are like league-winning numbers, but hey, man, that that's... Look, we're just trying to get value here, right? We're mm-hmm. not looking for the next Justin Jefferson. We're just looking for someone who who is a phenomenal value at their current ADP. And he played 17 games last year. You love to see it. Never going to be mad about that. Chris Godwin staying healthy. And he only had two receiving touchdowns last season. Positive, positive regression during got to see, Got to, got to. I'm just getting over being sick, so that's why I'm at the home studio and I'm not drinking, but I have some water. Yeah, and like you mentioned, you're 100% right about the slot. Uh, Godwin slot snap rate the last three seasons. This past year, he was at 33%. The year before, 66%. And then the year before that, 61%. Mm. He's, you know, uh, who was it? Liam Liam Cohen, the new Bucks offensive Mm -hmm. coordinator, mentioned Mm -hmm. that he's going to have him way more frequently in the slot the bucks will be using 11 personnel uh it's it's i feel like it's inevitable that he's gonna produce i just i don't i don't see how he's not a good value this season right bearing an injury how does chris godwin not become a positive positive roi for you yeah i mean he's right this draft that i'm looking at the draft board right now of, of the mock we're doing to to build this adp back with the patrons um we got a eight twelve, so ninth round, uh, Chris Godwin. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take that all day. That's uh, that's that's really really solid value for for Godwin of a guy who can come in and you can just basically, you know, the thing with all the guys that that you've mentioned, uh, Austin, is that I just you can count on them in your lineup for the most part, mm-hmm. right? You know, that's I just want to I want to get somebody. You know, these guys aren't high end producers, but they have the ability to. We've seen them produce at high levels. Any game, they could be a WR one. What they're not going to do is is nine out of ten times is just kill you in the lineup. Uh, so those are those are the guys. I know everybody likes to uh, point out how you should sell all the guys and and how you should basically have a team full of the top five guys at every position, which is is just totally not realistic. And if there's any good league I've ever been in, the talent is spread all over the place. So uh, these are the guys that help really fill out lineups and help you make differences week after week where you're just catching an extra couple of points in that second flex or the third wide receiver spot or the third flex when you're getting a little deeper in there uh, and that they're just, they're not killing you. And when they go off, they certainly win you weeks. And when they just have their regularly scheduled program, they don't lose you the week. Uh, and that's, you know, I, I know some people have a different opinion of, of, of how that goes, but I, I don't find that to be terribly realistic um, about how some people, uh, I think, talk about the amount of really good players you have on your league. The, I think that's a league that folds in three years because, you know, there's a bunch of bozos in there that traded a bunch of trash for uh, and, and now nobody, everyone's upside down in their team. So. Yeah, I, I know. I, again, well said. I just I think that this list is is pretty safe, man. I don't. I don't think any of these guys are really going to burn you. Like, I don't think they're going to put any duds, any zeros in your, in you know, 
throughout the season. Like I, I just feel like they got safe floors, like relatively mm. high floors with yeah. the chance to be a, a wide receiver one right. throughout the season. Right. You just, you don't yeah. know when they're going to pop, but Hey man, like these are the type of players that, that you definitely want to have in the flex or, or on your bench, man. Like these are the players I love when, when I have these type of you know caliber players, like whether it's Terry McLaurin or Godwin or Deontay, whoever it is on the bench. I'm like, I just feel so safe. Oh, yeah. I know, I know I can compete. I love it. I love it. All right. Let's wrap up. Let's get out of here. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. we got another video out this week with uh, rookie pick values, kind of an either w- w- what's this pick worth? And, and we're kind of doing some of the similar stuff that we did here, but getting a little more deep into it, talking a little bit more on the rookie side of things. We talked a lot of the veteran side. So like to keep, you know, both sides of the scale cooking here, especially since we just got these new rookies in here. So we'll, we'll have a little bit more rookie focused one and we'll have some other episodes for you. So keep it locked and loaded here. Make sure you go follow our guy, Austin, uh, at Austin Abbott FF on the Twitters. He's out there just crushing, just crushing in them streets, much like he's just crushing that, that, uh, that tank top right there. I was going to say, shut off, Casey. I know what you're <laughs> saying. <laughs> Guys, oh, guy just came from the gym. He's, 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 you, you, go, you go creatine? What do you go with? Uh, I just do legs every day. That's all I do. Just legs every day. <laughs> just AJ Dillon, baby. Yeah. Quadzilla. All right. All right, guys. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.